In the year 2005, before I turned 11, I was a budding coaster enthusiast, and around this time, The Voyage was announced for Holiday World. And ever since that announcement, The Voyage had always been right at the top of my bucket list for coasters that I absolutely wanted to ride. I eventually lost interest in coasters, but through many, many years, about 10 years where I kind of fell off from the coaster community, I had always had this ride still in the back of my mind, and in 2015, before I had regained my interest in coasters again a couple years later, I actually went to Holiday World and I got to ride the Voyage. So today I'm going to talk about my experience on the ride. The Voyage, a hybrid wooden coaster manufactured by the Gravity Group, opened in the year 2006 and it cost Holiday World $8.5 million. This is a huge ride. It stands at 159 feet tall, has a first drop of 154 feet, so this is a massive wooden coaster. When you look at it, it really looks like a hyper coaster and sort of even functions as one with all of its large camelback hills and airtime moments. It's a very long ride, 6,442 feet of track. I believe it is the second longest wooden coaster in the world. It reaches a speed of 67 miles per hour, so it's one of the fastest wooden coasters. The first drop has an angle of 66 degrees. The Voyage operates with two Philadelphia Toboggan Company trains, so the classic old wooden coaster trains, and I think that is to this ride's benefit. There was a period in time where Holiday World was considering getting Timberliner trains, but I guess that it didn't work out because the trains would have been too light to really make it through the entire course and rip through all the track like it is supposed to. I got to ride the Voyage in September of 2015, and the day that I went to Holiday World, I got several rides on the Voyage, about four or five rides, I believe. Starting off here, you go out of the station and go down a small dip, and then you begin the ascent up this 159-foot tall lift hill. You get a great view of the surrounding area from here. Not a whole lot to look at. Holiday World is basically in the middle of nowhere, but still, it's a impressive view, and it's just very nice. You got these flags at the top. It's a nice small touch. We reach the top here, and then you just get thrown over the top here, go down this awesome first drop, straight into the foliage there. This is a great terrain coaster. Go up the second 107-foot tall hill, down another big drop there. Then the third hill still is 100 feet tall. Then you go down into the first underground tunnel of the ride, one of many. Go over this small airtime hump, over this hill, get some decent airtime. Then you go into this awesome spaghetti bowl section that is just super low to the ground, has all these little dips in it. You hit these amazing high-speed 90-degree banked turns, and this part is absolutely crazy. I mean, this whole ride is really intense, but this is where it starts to get really ridiculous. You go through a couple dips here, go through another underground tunnel. This is where you hit the mid-course brake run. And you hit this triple down drop right here, going through this massive tunnel. And you pretty much regain all of your speed very quick. It's amazing. You go over these little airtime bumps and then through a couple twists here through the structure. And you're getting pretty good airtime on all these little humps here. Another 90 degree bank turn here. Twist around again to the left. And then we hit this finale of the ride where we just sort of twist around through this tunnel and then the ride sort of encircles itself and then you just go through some more dips and then you hit the final break run here. This is an amazing coaster and it was quite rough in the traditional wood coaster sense, that sort of wild out of control feeling that I've talked about in some of my other wooden coaster reviews. It's not really something I found unbearable or really uncomfortable, but I think the roughness just really added to the sheer intensity of the voyage. Of course, being such an intense wooden coaster and traveling at such high speeds through all of those low to the ground turns and everything, 
I do believe that there is a lot of maintenance needed on this ride. I've heard somewhere that that spaghetti bowl section gets retracked like every couple of years, and I could easily believe that because the train is just tearing through that section 67 miles per hour, and I'm sure that needs a lot of maintenance. I'm going to talk about the airtime here. Until the opening of Steel Vengeance, the Voyage actually had the most airtime of any coaster in the world. So when I rode the Voyage, this was still the case. You do get a lot of airtime on the Voyage, but it's not really intense airtime. There's not really much ejector airtime. It's a lot of floater. A lot of the airtime is honestly pretty weak. You do get a lot of it though, and this is a ride that I think benefits more from the sheer intensity and the speed, but you also get a lot of airtime thrown into the mix. Don't get me wrong. So it's definitely not a bad thing and it does add to the ride in a good way. So the airtime is pretty good. The intensity is amazing. Great speed, great pacing. You tear through this whole layout. This ride being over 6,400 feet in length, you would think maybe it would lose some speed by the end, but no, you just fly through this. And I could only imagine riding this during Hollywood nights when the trims are off. That would be phenomenal. But putting that aside, the Voyage provides an amazing all-around ride experience with good airtime. It is pretty rough, very intense ride. This was my favorite coaster from 2015 when I rode it up until I rode Steel Vengeance. So it's a phenomenal ride and I'm so glad I got the opportunity to ride it. And I hope I can make it out to Holiday World within the next three or four years to get on all these great rides again. Holiday World has an amazing lineup, especially for such a small park. And it's an amazing little place. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the voyage. Have you guys ridden it or are you getting out to ride it this year maybe? And what are your thoughts on it? What do you think of the airtime on the voyage? How was your guys' experience with that? I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like more roller coaster and amusement park content, be sure to subscribe, like, comment on this, and I'll catch you guys next time. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.